Welcome to Fairhaven Baptist Church and the commencement services for Fairhaven Christian Academy and Fairhaven Baptist College. While we're here for commencement exercises, it's the commencement of a school and college that's part of a church, and much of this evening will be just like a church service. We need to be respectful. Please refrain from walking in and out, answering cell phones, maybe please make sure they're off or silenced, uh, taking pictures, video, or disturbing the service in any way. There'll be plenty of time afterwards to use our cameras. You will hear some musical performances. Students will be receiving awards, certificates, diplomas, degrees, and some students will be giving testimonies of how God helped and strengthened them during their time of schooling. It is appropriate to congratulate students at the proper time. But if you'd like to praise God with them, a hearty amen or praise the Lord is a good way to do that. We've tried to group the various parts of the service in this way. We'll begin with some performances and award presentations. You're, of course, welcome to applaud during this time if you desire. And then we'll have some testimonies and offering time with a special arrangement of a sacred song, some other sacred singing, and a sermon from God's word. During this portion, we ask that you do not applaud. And then at the end, we'll present all the graduates for the respective diplomas and degrees. Please stand with me as we sing our national anthem. Oh, sing, can you sing by the dawn everybody for being here this evening. We know that there's a lot of parents, friends, relatives, I guess uh, Romans and countrymen. Uh, we appreciate all of you guys being here and it's a little different uh, for us. Um, I, I try to avoid saying the word, all right, that uh, basically wiped out the world. Um, but here uh, for just a little bit and I hope over the next couple hours you'll be able to just uh, have an ease of anxiety pass away, and you'll experience just a fresh breath air of freedom. And so we appreciate that you came here, and we appreciate uh, all the hard work. And we prayed uh, for a long time about what to do, and I uh, praise the Lord that our governor gave us a lot of liberty, and so I appreciate that he gave us a lot of liberty in doing different things. Uh, but a lot of people have chosen not to do graduation services, but again, our staff, and others, uh, we spent a lot of time uh, contemplating and praying about this, and our students uh, put a lot of hard work uh, into this, a lot of hard work, some of them years, <laughs> years that have gone into this, and uh, I, I think uh, that it's worthy of us uh, stepping out, and Americans have always been willing to take a chance, and it seems like that spirit is gone, and so I think, I don't think we're taking much of a chance here. Um, by congratulating some people that finished a course. And so I appreciate you uh, coming in. But then also, uh, there are some people that weren't able to make it. We were talking this afternoon. Uh, there's a, a guy uh, stuck in the communist uh, country of California, and uh, he was graduating in our master's program, and he put it off for next year because uh, he would have to use the Underground, underground Railroad, and that shut down in the late 1800s. And so, <laughs> but uh, we may have to resurrect that soon. But 
Um, there are some, and Dr. Vogel will mention that, there are some that weren't able to make it here this evening, and, but we still are going to mention them. We appreciate uh, their completion of task. As Dr. Vogel mentioned, uh, in your program, you'll see things listed out and basically starting with the student testimonies. Like I will clap after the finale of the Little Russian, and that is not in relation to politics, all right? But um, that's, <laughs> that's a piece by Tchaikovsky, and normally it's just weird to say amen after that, all right? You'll understand, so we clap after that. But then the student testimony, starting from that point on, a good hearty amen is good, uh, good and encouraging for the hard work and if it blesses your heart. And so uh, there are a couple other things. Uh, for instance, we put in a church choir piece this evening uh, because we like to have some singing. We like highlighting music here, and I think it'll be... We, it, it took a little work to come up with a, a really good program for this evening, but I think you'll appreciate the effort uh, that everybody put in uh, to... Uh, congratulating our graduates. So I'm going to ask Dr. Mitchell to come at this time and open our service in prayer. Amen. Let's pray. Father, thank you. Thank you so much for the work of grace that you've done in the lives that are represented here tonight. Thank you for the honor that it's been for Fairhaven have a small part in what you're doing in these lives. Thank you for the parents and grandparents and pastors and teachers and so many that have poured their effort into them. And tonight really is a, a bearing of fruit in many ways of those efforts. And the Lord, I thank you for the potential they represent. I'm excited about all the lives that they will interact with and be able to be a blessing to. So I ask Oh, God, that tonight, Lord, this evening would be uh, one that brings honor and glory to you, for you're the only one that truly deserves all honor and glory. I pray, Lord, that you would give protection uh, to these young people as they go forth to serve you. And then, Lord, I also ask that between tonight and, uh, uh, Lord, that day, when prayerfully they will have lived for those words, well done, thou good and faithful servant. I just ask, Lord, that you would mightily use them. Again, be with us tonight. I ask all these things in Christ's precious name. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. All right, I'd like to start us off with recognizing some high school students for accomplishments through the year. There's several of them uh, here as I uh, announce the awards. I'm going to ask them to come down to the front here, and we have a certificate for them. Once we get them all down at the front, we'll give them a round of applause at the end. <clears throat> There's four categories, or four groups of awards we want to pass out tonight. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, the first one, uh, the first category is students who have excelled in certain subjects throughout the year and have also maintained a good Christian testimony. Uh, here we have students in 9th through 12th grade uh, winning different awards. The first award is 9th through 12th Bible, and that is Laura Crigo. And while she's coming, um, history is split into two, 9th and 10th, and 11th and 12th. And Laura also uh, won the award for history. The 11th and 12th grade award for history goes to Renee Liss. In math, we have one award this year in pre-calculus. goes to Holly Muller. Science, we split up into 9th and 10th and 11th and 12th grade. Uh, 9th and 10th grade goes to Condoleezza Wright. And 11th and 12th grade also goes to Holly Muller. If you're keeping track, we only have one gender thus far. <laughs> uh, there, were, there were guys nipping at their heels, but not quite there. So we do have a guy here. Ninth grade English is Luke Armacost. You might be shocked by that. <laughs> Tenth and eleventh grade English is Katie Brader. And 
and band, this person should be behind me, is Annette Armacost. All right, well, Annette's coming. The next uh, two awards are the senior class valedictorian and salutatorian. This is a simple uh, grade point calculation of their averages of their grades from ninth through 12th grade. <clears throat> This year, the uh, valedictorian is Holly Moeller, and the salutatorian is Renee Liss, which makes sense for them to be down front already. Uh, <clears throat> the next uh, award is the American Christian Honor Society. Uh, this is open to students in 10th through 12th grade who have an excellent academic record, maintain a good Christian testimony, and exercise leadership in and out of school. Um, these students are selected by the administrative and pastoral staff. This year we have two students uh, for this. Uh, the first is an 11th grader, Andrew Edwards. And the second is a 10th grader, Laura Crigo. The last award we have is the Christian Character Award. This is uh, given to a student who uh, excels in several different areas, uh, Christian leadership amongst the student body, maintaining a good testimony before their peers and their teachers, faithful completion of academic record requirements, and service to God through the church. Um, the selection for this goes through three phases. The first step is the students nominate uh, fellow students for this award. The second step is the teachers uh, vote from those that have been nominated, and then the final uh, step is the pastoral and administrative staff uh, choosing the final winner. This prize also comes with a cash prize, which I have in my pocket. If this person comes to see me, I'll give it to them. If not, I'll forget who's supposed to get it. <laughs> so, uh, This year, the Christian Character Award goes to Annette Armacost. Let's give them a round of applause. While we want to maintain the serious nature of a church service, these are commencement exercises, and most likely you've not heard music like this next song we have planned tonight in church recently. In normal years, we prepare a special song in three categories for our graduation service. The first category is a patriotic or march selection. We are grateful that in his providence, God placed us here in America. And as Americans, we believe it's proper to teach our children to have a Christian view and appreciation for the country has given us. Our patriotic, or March selection succumbed to the coronavirus. But we will close the night with, a, with the popular patriotic prayer, God bless America. We've also asked uh, some, of, some from our church orchestra to come and help us since it was quite hard to rehearse for the last two months. We select a classical piece, also the second one that we do is a classical piece, and there's a wealth of challenging music that I can choose from to stretch the abilities that God has given us. Our classical selection is an excerpt from the finale to Symphony No. 2, Little Russian, by Peter Tchaikovsky. Tchaikovsky was a painstaking composer who labored intensely over his symphonies, but his sym second symphony came together in just six months. Sounds like a long time to me, but uh, he finished it in 1872. Later, he destroyed the score and completely rewrote, rewrote it in December of 1879 and January of 1880. The symphony gained its subtitle, Little Russian, after his death. It refers to the fact that many of the musical ideas in the symphony echo folk songs from the Ukraine, a section of the country known to Russians as Little Russia. On hearing the slow introduction to the finale, music lovers might accuse Tchaikovsky of plagiarizing, I'm not gonna say this right, Mussorgsky's, um, Mussorgsky's The Great Gate of Kiev from Pictures and Exhibition. But the theme Tchaikovsky and Mussorgsky both used to base their works on was a popular Ukrainian folk song called The Crane. 
Tchaikovsky uses varying rhythmic patterns in his use of the folk tune. The melody is repeated over and over, underpinned with various and ever-changing accompaniment. Eventually, he introduces a gentler, contrasting melody to provide some interest, and then an exuberant ending filled with bombastic brass fanfares and stirring cymbal crashes brings the symphony to an exultant end. The finale from Symphony Number no. 2, Little Russian.
Good evening. I know some of you might be nervous seeing a Dameron up here because you're probably expecting this testimony to last as long as our church announcements normally do. But I promise to try to keep it short and sweet. I clearly remember, like it was yesterday, walking down to chapel on my first day of college. I was terrified. There were so many unknowns ahead of me. Don't get me wrong, I loved college life, but I got so busy with my responsibilities that I overlooked a vital part of the ministry, relationships. I was so preoccupied with my to-do list that I often forgot there were actual people around me. Some, like my teachers, who I needed to learn from, and others, like my bus kids and students, who needed my encouragement and help. Once I understood how important these relationships were, I realized each person is brought into my life for a specific reason. Also, amidst my busyness, I neglected my most important relationship, my walk with the Lord. I thought I could get everything done by being disciplined, but in reality, I was working in my own strength, which resulted in less energy and joy. And God taught me that it is only through a strong walk with him that I will succeed. This fall, I will be moving with one of my classmates, Allison Gunzenhauser, to Tigard, Oregon, to teach at Westgate Christian Academy. Many have asked, so are you excited? My answer is absolutely. But once again, similar to when I started college, I'm facing many unknowns. I will miss home, my friends, and I'm burdened about the large responsibility of educating my students. But through these last four years, I've learned that if I make helping others in my walk with the Lord priority, all of these unknowns will disappear. Sincere gratitude fills me as I look into the faces of so many who have willingly given of themselves to help me bring, to this, bring me to this moment. As I take this ne next step in God's plan for my life, I will depend on the prayers of those who mean so much to me. Thank you. When I heard that I only had two minutes to thank everyone, at first, I felt self-pity. How am I going to be able to tell how much I have loved my time here at Fairhaven in such a short time? My name is Kelly Rudin, and I grew up on the mission field in Mexico City. I would quickly like to mention the pastors that have inspired me, Pastor Dameron, Pastor Armacos, and Pastor Vogelin. Their example and preaching has been a great source of encouragement to me along the way. I'd also like to thank my parents, teachers, as well as those whom I've had the privilege to work under, Mr. Wright, Mrs. Schreiber, Mrs. Martin, and Mrs. O. And I definitely don't want to forget the church members. Your faithfulness to God has spoken volumes to my heart. All those seconds are counting down before I'm done, just as the last four years have blown by. I must at least slow down enough to offer some lessons I've learned in my short time here. These lessons include redeeming the time, using every minute, and learning to make my own decisions with my parents, so being, being far away. I learned to rely on God as my guide. At college, I've been challenged to make the convictions of my parents my own and have learned to, in spite of my busy schedule, take time to pray while maintaining a clean conscience and starting each day with a new slate. I have also learned that in finding God's will for my life, the safest advice is from my parents and my pastor. The last lesson I'd like to quickly leave is to my fellow students. Time is too short to waste and play around. As the school motto from Psalm 90 says, teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. We should all strive to apply wisdom in our lives. Don't expect your parents and church staff to do everything for you. To do your best, you might have to sacrifice time and leisure. Settle for the best, not just average. I will try to take everything I've learned here at Fairhaven to Mexico and try to be the best example to the Mexican people and children as I become a teacher at Academia Bautista de Mexico. Now, instead of remorse for having too little time, I feel grateful 
to have had the opportunity to say more with less words. After all, as they say, brevity is the soul of wit. Good evening. My name is Levi Armacost. Looking back over college, many things come to mind. Friendships, activities, chapel, camaraderie, bus ministry, empowered youth plays, soccer, basketball, and even a few harmless pranks. Oh, and um, I think taking classes was in there somewhere as well. While many things have impacted my college life, I would like to express my gratefulness for the care of the staff for the students. I love that the teachers here are not the type who come to class, teach, and rarely interact with you besides that. Of course, I am so thankful for all of the work, time, and prayer that the teachers put into their classes. I have no doubt that their day in, day out labor is time consuming and often taxing. So I would like to say a sincere thank you to all of you teachers who spend hours preparing and then spend your whole day teaching for the purpose of investing in this next generation. Your work will not be forgotten. But even more so than in the classroom, I appreciate the personal relationship that the staff has with the students. I have so many memories of just talking for long periods of time with different staff men, just about ministry and life in general. These conversations with older, mature Christians encouraged me in my walk with the Lord and they shaped my thinking to be more biblical. However, not all of the conversations were pats on the back. Some of them were corrections, some were firm rebukes, and others were simple challenges to follow God in every area of my life. I know for myself, I can always use more spiritual grit. So, thank you for your encouragement, correction, and care. Now, as I graduate, I would like to thank my parents for the immeasurable amount of work and time that they have put into my life. And I am certain that I can speak for the rest of the graduates that we owe a great debt of gratitude to our parents. I also want to thank my pastor, not that side, Pastor Dameron, <laughs> Pastor Dameron for the same care throughout my life. And again, of this gratefulness, I am certain, extends from every graduate to their pastors as well. Thank you for your faithfulness. But most of all, I would like to thank the Lord. I don't know where I would be in life if it was not for him. He truly is a great God. This summer, I will be getting married to my fiance, Bethany McGovern, and we will be moving to Urbana, Ohio to serve in the church and Christian school at Grace Baptist Church. These sure are exciting times. God has been so good to us. All right, I have two minutes for announcements, and so... <laughs> Put a watch on it. All right. Uh, we are going to be taking a graduation offering. We had a lot of plans a couple months ago to promote this and do different things, but that fell by the wayside. And usually we started this a couple years ago doing a graduation offering where we um, a lot the funds brought in this night to help with projects through the summer. And there are projects we're doing, in fact, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. We're starting out with some demo projects, and uh, we also, uh, if we have extra funds, uh, we try to uh, build our online um, our online repertoire. Uh, this fall, we're starting a seminary, so there's a bunch of things that we're uh, working on, but I'll just leave it at that. And so, if God leads you to give this evening, that's uh, what it will be used for. Uh, we weren't able to get a graph and all that. We usually try to get that together, but we weren't able to do that. So we're taking it, using it for uh, the ministries here as far as upgrading uh, some things as far as the property. And then hopefully in the fall, uh, our goal is to launch Independent Baptist Seminary. So we're excited for that. So ushers, if you want to come forward, just remind the church family, and I don't know if you're going to introduce anything. He's going to introduce the offertory in just a moment but church family just a reminder this weekend one service on sunday morning at 10 30 and then our 5 30 evening service but this sunday is our official opening opening day and so uh praise the lord that we can get back at the work 
of the ministry. Dr. Vogelin is going to introduce the offertory. Our offering selection is a fanfare a prelude setting to praise ye the Lord the Almighty. The words are in your program or in the hymnal. We are, um, this is a, a, of course, as a school, we're Christians, and our primary purpose is to give praise and pleasure to God. The text of this great hymn of praise is loosely based on Psalm 103, 1 through 6, and Psalm 150, but it pulls on imagery of praise from throughout the Psalms. The fir first, uh, first written in five stanzas in German and published in 1680 by Joachim Neander, the first three verses of the original text were translated in 1863, and then later the fourth and fifth verses were translated anonymously. Our hymnal contains four verses, leaving out the original third stanza, which begins, Praise to the Lord, who has fearfully, wonderfully made you. Each stanza addresses a different aspect of the nature of God. He's creator, he is sovereign, he's defender and friend, he's a refuge, he's our protector, this sacred piece uses the, uses the tune Lobe den Heren, which is German for praise to the Lord. Let's pray as we receive our offering. Our Father, we thank you for your goodness to us and for the opportunities you've given us to serve you here at our church, especially tonight. We think of the opportunities you've given us through our college and academy to uh, help train uh, those that will follow us in your service. And we pray that you'd be glorified by what is done uh, has been done and what is done through the rest of this night. In Jesus' name, amen. take our hymnals now or you can find it in your program we're going to sing the hymn that the offertory is based upon number 13 in our hymn books praise you the lord the almighty the king of creation let's stand together as we sing on the first verse together praise you the lord the almighty 
sing a number tonight that is mostly unfamiliar to modern congregations, and I just wanted to say a word about it before we sing. Um, our church learned this song this year, and it was written about 1860 or so and put to music in about 1876. In 1904 and 1905, the Holy Spirit sent a revival to the nation of Wales that, as far as we know, um, was the greatest revival of the 20th century. It was a revival that saw over 100,000 people saved and really uh, changed the entire culture of the nation of Wales. As the revival swept through Wales, uh, this song, although written 30 years or more before, uh, before became the most song, sung song of the revival. And uh, the song is, became known as the love song of the Welsh revival. And uh, I want to say just a word about the words. The first two verses... I think are especially important and descriptive as they talk about what Christ has done for us. You know, so much of worship music is all about me and how good I feel, and this is not that at all. And uh, one reason we chose this arrangement is because these are not flippant words, they're, they're very serious words, and uh, I believe that uh, the, the marriage of the words and music here is, is deserving. And um, they deserve a, a serious setting. So I know you appreciate the beautiful music that this arrangement brings. And we're going to put the words up on the screen so you can follow along as the choir sings, Here is Love, Vast as the Ocean.
appreciate all the work and adaptation that folks uh, put together to have just a special service. Uh, I know our church folks appreciate the extra time you put in to make things just a little extra special uh, for the graduation service. Our speaker this evening is Pastor Alan Gardner, and Alan Gardner was born in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, and what's interesting is uh, God has led him back there, and he's been pastoring there in Leola, Pennsylvania for 20 years now, and um, an interesting uh, testimony, and we have it uh, written in your bulletin, challenge you to read that, but it's so interesting how God leads and uh, brought up in a home that basically honored God, but he was unsaved, and then God moved a preacher uh, right next door to him, uh, and uh, just in God's providence and God's leading, uh, was able that preacher was able to uh, turn him to Christ, and so uh, he found Christ through that, and then was called into the ministry, has been in the ministry now for a little over 30 years, and 20 years there pastoring in that church in Leola, Pennsylvania. And so I was glad that he could set this time aside, he and his wife, and be with us, that he could, he could escape a little bit. Um, uh, we, were, we were wondering if he was going to be able to come, and God allowed him to be able to uh, get here for our graduation ceremony. So he's going to come and speak at this time. Thank you, preacher. Amen. Well, I... Uh... I'm just glad to be here tonight uh, with you. I, I thank you uh, and pray for your preacher, thankful for your preacher uh, and this church. Uh, it means a lot to us, our family, our church. Uh, over the years, uh, we've had a great relationship and uh, friendship here, and we're so thankful for that. And uh, make sure you pray for your preacher. Uh, as uh, as uh, you, know, you seek to do things here for the Lord, uh, the devil's going to attack him, and uh, especially during these times in which we live in. Uh, you know, as I was listening to everything that, uh, <laughs> that was going on here tonight, I thought, man in the world, how in the world am I going to follow that? You know, Tchaikovsky, first of all, you know, and I follow Tchaikovsky. Well, you know, and then kids, you know, testifying about what God's done for them and their parents. You know, everybody's like, oh, you know, and then the Lord Almighty. You know, and finally revival is just like, man, I might as well not even stand up, you know. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, but, you know, I, I'm so thankful uh, that the Lord has chosen to use me. I feel uh, like, you know, he's chosen, the, the scripture says he's chosen the foolish things of this world to confound the wise, and I feel like I fit in there. <laughs> Amen. So uh, I, I'm, I'm good to go this evening. But I'm just, I'm not, uh, I've never been an intellectual. I've never been... Uh, the smartest kid in the class. I always had to fight for all my grades. Uh, you know, I, I wasn't the valedictorian uh, uh, in my school. Uh, at the time, I was the, uh, I graduated third in my class, uh, but there's only three in my class. So, you know, uh, <laughs> so uh, anyway, but uh, I'm thankful that God's chosen to use me, and uh, uh, I'm really humbled by that. And so that your preacher would call upon me tonight to speak uh, at your graduation, I feel very honored. And uh, so I pray that God make me a blessing tonight. Uh, as we start this evening, I would like you to take your Bibles, please. And uh, we're going to start at Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 and 6. Maybe some of you may not even need to, many of you don't even need to turn there. Uh, but uh, uh, just uh, uh, turn and look anyway. Proverbs chapter 3, uh, Proverbs chapter 3, uh, verses number uh, 5 and 6. Proverbs chapter 3, uh, verses number 5 and 6. I want to get some things from this passage, and then we're uh, going to move on from here this evening. Uh, uh, what I want to speak to you tonight is something, again, I, I said last night as I spoke in the chapel, uh, it was a truth that God had worked in my heart as a young man uh, getting and preparing for the ministry uh, and uh, that he uh, chose to, to work in me. Uh, and uh, then tonight as well, uh, as I speak this evening, another truth that God used in my life, I figure that these truths God used to mold and make me and help me to be what uh, he wanted me to be would be a great opportunity and topic to share with you tonight. And I just want to uh, give you the title of my message this evening, Being a Man of Your Word. Being a Man of Your Word. Of your word. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 tonight as we begin. Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding. 
In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy path. Father in heaven tonight, I pray that you would help me this evening as I seek to be a blessing uh, to these folks here and be a challenge to those who are graduating here tonight. Lord, may these words be something that would stick with them throughout their ministry and continue to uh, challenge them and help them to be the kind of people uh, that you want them to be in their service for you, whatever that might be, uh, whether it's into full-time ministry or whether it's uh, into just being a helper to uh, some church and pastor, bus ministry, Sunday school teacher, uh, whatever that may be, may you help them to be the kind of people uh, that uh, would glorify you by being people of their word. Thank you now for what you'll do and how you'll help me. Lord, for without you I can do nothing, but I know that with you all things are possible. I pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Many of us, as we uh, seek uh, God's will, uh, make promises. Uh, I remember uh, uh, years ago as I was studying for the ministry, and uh, I was always sitting under preachers and hearing what they had to say and then being challenged to make a response, what I was going to do with what I heard. And, uh, you know, during those times, uh, I, I made God some promises. Uh, the only thing that I would uh, challenge you to do uh, when you hear messages is be careful you don't make promises you cannot keep. Uh, I know many times that uh, you'd stand up and hear preachers say, who will promise you? You need to promise God tonight that you'll win three souls to Christ this week. And although that's a noble goal, you may not be able to fulfill that goal. Uh, or I'm going to witness to somebody every day. I'm going to make sure I witness to somebody every day. Well, you know, as you get into your life, you know, you may find yourself in a bed of sickness. Uh, you may find yourself in the middle of COVID uh, you have, where you have to stay in your home. There may be a lot of things that you cannot control uh, that will determine what you can and cannot do. So I would always, I would challenge you in this way, let your words before God be few because whatever you promise God, you better fulfill. You better keep every word of what you tell God. Uh, and, and so uh, even as it says in Ecclesiastes 5, 2, Be not rash with thy mouth, and let thine heart be hasty, uh, let not thine heart be hasty to utter anything before God. For God is in heaven and thou upon earth, therefore let thy words be few. Here as we find, as we begin the message tonight in Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, it says, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways, what? Acknowledge him. We're supposed to acknowledge him. We're supposed to acknowledge him by our witness. We're supposed to acknowledge him by our daily walk in life. And yes, does that mean witnessing and testifying to others as much as I can? And so yes, as there's a message that challenges you on on being a soul winner, yes, promise God, I will be the best soul winner I can be, but don't make a promise that you cannot keep. Acknowledge him. You know, God's part is directing your path. You don't know where that path is going to lead you, so be careful what promises that you make to God because you want to make promises that you're able to keep. You know, you may promise God, well, I'm going to spend 15 minutes extra every day in prayer. You know, if you make that promise, you better make sure that you keep it. I've made promises to God in my life that, uh, and sometimes I wished I wouldn't have because they really press me to make sure that I keep them because if I make God a promise, I better keep it. Matter of fact, early on in my ministry and in my life and my consideration, my service for God, I had somebody preach a message along this line and, so I, and said how important it is that you keep your word to God and they encouraged me whenever I made a decision to mark it down in the front of my Bible and I tried to keep those few, but I, I have them marked here in the date that I made them. Uh, you know, this is a Bible that, uh, that was given to me on my ordination. I had it recovered so I could continue to keep it and use it so that I would be reminded of those promises that I made to God because it's important that you keep your word. God is a God of his word. Aren't you glad tonight that he is? Amen. You know, that uh, we're so thankful that he is a God that cannot lie. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Every word of God is pure. Uh, it will never pass away. God will always do as he said, and so should we. 
This is, a, this is a message that I heard years ago and my pastor also emphasized to me, so I hope tonight it, it will be a blessing to you. And as I made promises to God, as I said, I tried to mark those down. And, and uh, you may find yourself in the midst of, of, of quarantine, you know, and so you need to make sure that every promise that you make, and thank God we're almost out of that as well, you know, uh, uh, pray for us, we're in Pennsylvania, they're kind of holding us pretty tight, uh, but thank God our, our, our area is starting to open up as well, so we're thankful to God for that. But uh, if you make God a promise, you better write it down. You better keep it. Also, with your children, if you tell them something, uh, you know, even those of you who are here listening, you ought to do it. You ought to keep that promise, you know, because they're going to see God like you. See, when, when, if you keep your promise, you're, you're what's real, you know. Uh, you're, you're what they see. You're the Christ that they view all the time and so if you make promises and you don't keep them they're going to begin to think that God acts the same way you need to keep your promises uh, you are God's representative to them and they will think God is like you in business and church and all of our affairs in life our word should be as good as God's tonight as I begin I want to go back to the the law of the vow in the Old Testament if you would with me uh, if you would go back to first of all uh, numbers chapter number 30 Numbers chapter number 30. Numbers chapter number 30. Numbers chapter number 30. And we're not going to read the whole chapter. It's not very long, but I do want to get the gist of the chapter. And Moses spake unto the heads of the tribes concerning the children of Israel, saying, This is the thing which the Lord hath commanded. If a man vow a vow unto the Lord, or swear an oath to bind his soul with a bond, he shall not break his word, he shall do according to all the, that proceedeth out of his mouth. If a woman shall vow a vow unto the Lord, and bind herself by a bond, being in her father's house in her youth, and her father hear her vow, and her bond wherewith she hath bound her soul, and her father shall hold his peace at her, then all her vows shall stand, and every bond wherewith she hath bound her soul shall uh, shall stand but if her father disallow her in the day that he heareth not that excuse me that he heareth not any of her vows or of her bonds wherewith she hath bound her soul shall stand and the lord shall forgive her because her father disallowed her so i always used to tell my wife you can't make a promise uh, if you make a promise i can always disallow that you know so uh, <laughs> uh you know but 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 if but if i hold my peace you're you're stuck you know uh, and and so uh, but what we see, we see the, the, uh, the vow here. And you go down through here and read more about that. And I challenge you to do it sometime. But would you please with me now turn over to Deuteronomy uh, chapter 23. Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy chapter number 23. Deuteronomy chapter number 23. Here in Deuteronomy 23, and we want to go down to verses 21 through 23. I'm going to read those verses for you. When thou vowest a vow unto the Lord thy God, thou shalt not slack to pay it. For the Lord thy God will surely require it of thee, and it would be sin in thee. But if thou shalt forbear to vow, it shall be no sin in thee. Now think of these, word, these verses here. I'm going to read verse 23 yet, but we're, when we get to the New Testament in a little while, I want you to think back on these verses. That which is gone out of thy lips, thou shalt keep and perform, even a free will offering, according as thou hast vowed unto the Lord thy God, which thou hast promised with thy mouth. Now, now uh, Psalm 15, uh, you can turn over there, but it begins, Lord, who shall abide in thy tabernacle? Who shall dwell in thy holy hill? Then it begins to list the characteristics of those mentioned, and one of those things was, he that sweareth to his own hurt, and what? Changes not. Notice also Ecclesiastes chapter 5 and verses number 4 and 5. You can turn over there with me if you would. Uh, Ecclesiastes chapter number 5 verses 4 and 5. I'm trying to give you a background first in the scriptures uh, as we get started here. Ecclesiastes chapter 5 and verses number 4 and 5. It says, When thou vowest a vow unto God, defer not to pay it. For he hath no pleasure in what? Fools. Pay that thou hast vowed, better it is that thou shouldst not vow than thou shouldst vow and not 
pay. You know, whenever I think of somebody like that, I think of, John, uh, I think of uh, Jonah. Uh, Jonah was a man who, I may, believe, made a vow to God that he would preach and do what God said. Uh, Jonah had decided, you know, when God told him to go to Nineveh, instead he was going to go to Tarshish. Now, aren't you glad that God's merciful? Aren't you glad that God gave him another chance? Uh, you know, the, the, the whale experience uh, for, for Jonah was a, uh, a blessed experience and a merciful experience by a loving God who wanted him to do what he said. You know, when he was finally there in the midst of the fish's belly, he repented finally and he prayed to the Lord and he said, I will pay that that I have vowed. I just want to encourage you tonight as graduates, if, you've made, if you're coming up to the place and you're looking, for, searching for God's will as we talked about last night, and along the way you made God some promises, you better keep those promises that you have made. Listen, many years ago I told God, you can have my life and I'll serve you in the ministry and I don't have any right to take that back. Amen. It belongs to him. And I have to, as long as I have breath, I'm going to preach. And I count it a privilege to serve him and preach his word. And I, don't ha I can't take it back. And I believe that if I start to walk away from the ministry, I believe God will give me experience like he gave to Jonah in order to bring me back and to help me to fulfill the promises that I've made to him. Turn to Joshua chapter number 9, please. Joshua chapter number 9. Here in the book of Joshua chapter number 9, Joshua was getting ready to uh, come into the land. And uh, maybe you remember the story of the Gibeonites. And uh, there in Joshua chapter number 9, and we'll just uh, read a, a, a little bit here of what's uh, going on. I'm, I'm going to jump around a little bit and try and follow me. It says, and it came to pass... Uh, when all the kings which were on this side of Jordan in the hills and the valleys and all the coast uh, of the great sea over against Lebanon, the Hittite and the Ammonite, the Canaanite and the Perizzite and the Hivite and the Jebusite heard thereof that they gathered themselves together to fight with Joshua and with Israel with one accord. And when the inhabitants of Gibeon heard what Joshua had done unto Jericho and unto Ai, they did work willingly and went and made as if they had been ambassadors and took old shacks upon their, uh, uh, their ashes and wine and bottles, old and rent and bound up, and old shoes and clotted upon their feet and old garments upon them. And all the bread of their provision uh, was dry and moldy. And they went to Joshua uh, unto the camp of Gilgal and said unto him and unto the men of Israel, We be come from a far country. Now therefore make ye a league with us. And the men of Israel said unto the Hittites, Peradventure ye dwell among us. And how shall we make a league with you? Man, somebody were even, they were even kind of little wondering about what was going on here uh, with these people. What if these are people that dwell amongst us? And they said unto Joshua, We be thy servants. Uh, and Joshua said unto them, Who are ye? And from whence come ye? And they said unto him, From a very far country thy servants are come because of the name of the Lord thy God. For we have heard of the fame of him and that all Egypt and, and, and that he did in, in Egypt. And all that he did to the two kings of the Amorite, Amorites that were beyond Jordan, to Shihon, king of Heshbon, and unto Og, king of Bashan, which was at Ashdod. Wherefore our elders and all the inhabitants of our country spake unto us, saying, Take victuals unto you for the journey, and go and meet with them. And he went on and explained, uh, 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 and the, the people believed what they said. Verse number 16, It came to pass at the end of three days that after they had made a league with them, that they heard that they were their neighbors, and that they dwelt among them. And the children of Israel journeyed and came unto their, uh, their cities on the third day. Now the, their cities were Gibeon and uh, Shephira and Beeroth and Kirjath Jerem. And the children of Israel smote them not because the princes of the congregation had sworn unto them by the Lord God of Israel. Now, now listen here. These were people of the land which God commanded them to what? Destroy. They came to them and they deceived them. But yet Joshua and the people of the land, they and the, and the king, uh, or I should say the, the chief of the fathers there, made a league with them and they made promises to them. Well, then they found out later that these were people of the land they were supposed to destroy. But notice what it says there. Notice what it says. 
And the children of Israel smote them up because the prince of the congregation had sworn unto them by what? The Lord. Now, never any place do you find a condemnation from God that they didn't destroy them. Matter of fact, if we would go over to 2 Samuel chapter 21 and verses number 1 through 9, we'll find over there in, in 2 Samuel chapter 21, verses number 1, 1 through 9, that uh, then there was famine in the days of David three years, year after year. And David inquired of the Lord and said, and the Lord answered, excuse me, and the Lord answered, it is for Saul and for his bloody house because he, how he slew, the Gibeonites, and the king called the Gibeonites and said unto them, uh, uh, now the Gibeonites were not the children of Israel. Notice, here's an explanation, parenthetical passage. It's an explanation of what's going on here. Now the Gibeonites were not of the children of Israel, but of the remnant of the Amorites. And the children of Israel had sworn unto them, and Saul sought to slay them in a zeal uh, uh, to the children of Israel and Judah. Wherefore David said unto the Gibeonites, What shall we do for you? And wherewith shall I, I make an atonement? Now eventually we see that some were killed as a result. But what I want to share with you and what I'm trying to tell you here tonight is that it didn't matter that the Gibeonites had deceived them. They made them a promise. And they were supposed to keep that promise. As a matter of fact, because they didn't keep that promise, God sent a plague upon Israel, and that plague continued until they made that right. You know, some people begin to say, well, you know, I didn't really know what I was saying. You know, I, I was young. You know, I, I really didn't understand the Word of God like I should. You know, and, and we begin to make excuses before God why we may not be keeping a promise that we made to Him. Do you think God cares about your excuses? No. Do you think God cares that they deceived them? No. What God cares about is they made a promise and they needed to keep it. And listen, young people, you've made some decisions. And, you know, as you begin to grow and you understand the scriptures more and you think, man, I shouldn't have maybe made that promise to God, don't you dare go back on it. Don't you dare go back on it. You know, there's nothing God has, he has nothing that's not holy. And we, when we put our hands on something that's holy, God's going to require it. Remember, David decided to bring up one time the Ark of the Covenant uh, to Jerusalem, and he decided he was going to do it a new way. <laughs> Instead of doing it the prescribed way by putting the staves through the sides and having the priests carry it on their shoulders, man, we want to get this done quickly and we're going to do it a new way. Careful of new ways, amen? amen. Be careful of new Bibles. Be careful of new doctrines, amen? Uh, there's nothing new under the sun, amen? You know, and even messages, you know, somebody, somebody said to me one time, hey, Pastor, I, I, I love that message. Can I have the outline? I'll give you credit for it. I said, I don't want credit. I said, just preach it, amen, it's God's word. You know, he, he's going to get up and say, Pastor God, I got this message from Pastor Gardner. I said, there's, no, there's nothing new. If we're preaching something new, we shouldn't be preaching it, amen. amen. But, but, but we, we shouldn't care, you know, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll start to learn the word of God and we'll start to think, well, you know, I really didn't know what I was talking about back then. And, you know, we begin to make excuses for a promise that we made God. And, you know, there's some times where I tried to back out, you know, some promises I made to God. And, and I know that when I stop being faithful to those things which I promised God, I'm in trouble spiritually. I can't go forward. Just like we find here in Israel, God had plagued them because the Gibeonites, who they promised they would not uh, uh, harm, they harmed them. And so God wasn't going to bless Israel until they fixed it. And I know that sometimes when we get along in our Christian walk in lives, you know, we, we, we promised God, you know, we would be a Sunday school teacher. We promised God we'd be a bus worker. We promised God, listen, I'll serve you full time. And listen, I've seen it in my own family. I've seen it with others who turned away from God's call for their life. Listen, their lives are 
a mess. Don't, if you've given God something, don't turn away. Don't go back on that promise. Keep your promise to God. You think of Jephthah's vow. Now, of course, we could talk about Jephthah and when he actually uh, sacrificed his daughter there or not. But we know this, he kept it. It was a rash vow. And he probably had, he uh, definitely, as we read in Scripture, he had some second thoughts about that vow when he saw his daughter coming out to meet him. But he kept his vow, and God honored it. Think of the commandment of the Lord Jesus when we come into the New Testament. Matthew chapter 5, verses 33 through 37, concerning uh, vows. He says, we're not supposed to vow. But he says, let your yea be yea and your nay be nay. And he says, for whatsoever is more than this cometh of evil. You know, whenever I think of that, I think of little kids. You know, and, and, and when they say, oh, come on, will you give me some of your candy? And they say, yeah, I'll give you some of my candy. Crush your heart. Right? Crush your heart, hope to die. Why? Because, guess what? They're not trusting that their yes is what? Good enough. And see, you know what the Lord says about that? That's evil. See, it used to be you could say yes and it meant you were going to do it. You know, a man's word was his bond. And you didn't have to worry about, you know, today you need all kinds of contracts. And, you know, if you've ever bought a car or a house or whatever, man, you'll spend 30 minutes, an hour, two hours signing documents because they want to make sure you're going to pay and people still don't pay. Right? And, and by the way, uh, you know, if you file bankruptcy, I believe as a Christian, you should still pay. Boy, I got quiet. Because what you, you, what you do with your life is your word honors God. And so even if the world gives you an out by their legal system, you still need to honor God. Amen. So let your yea be yea. It's evil to have to follow up your yes with I promise. It means your yes wasn't good enough. In James 5, 2, it says, swear not at all. But of all above all things, my brethren, swear not, neither by heaven, neither by earth, neither by, uh, by any other oath, but let your yea be yea and your nay be nay, lest you fall into what? You know the passage? Condemnation. Judgment. Did you ever tell one of your kids or somebody else you were going to do something and then didn't do it? Do you realize you're not right with God? Scripture says we're going to give an account for every idle word. God hears it. Preacher, man, that's serious. Yeah, God, does God take his word serious? If we add to or take away from his word, does he promise judgment? Absolutely he does, amen. That's why we believe the, the, the King James Bible, amen, is the word of God. And we shouldn't mess with it. And see, if God takes his word seriously, so will he take your word seriously because you represent him. If any man speak, let him speak as the one oracles of God. We ought to be careful what we say. You know, there's times where, you know, I have regretted some things that I have said behind the pulpit as I realized later, now that wasn't exactly correct. And I had to go straighten it out. I know none of you other preachers make any errors, but, you know, this one does. There's times where I've had to go back to my daughters and tell them, listen, I'm sorry, I was wrong. Because I believe if you're a person of character, if you're a man of God, then you're going to realize when you were wrong. And listen, your children and others will respect you when you're willing to admit it. Amen. 
Think of New Testament example. You know, we fall into condemnation when we fail to keep our word. New Testament example, Ananias and Sapphira. Turn to, turn to Acts chapter 5. Acts chapter number 5. I'm just about done, preacher. You know, I, 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 I never did well in homiletics when they gave me a time limit. They always made me sit down. So uh, I'll, I'm, uh, I'm uh, going to finish up here. But James, uh, excuse me, uh, uh, Acts chapter number 5. Acts chapter number 5. Now, you're, you're there, I'm not. Give me a chance to get there. Acts chapter number 5. Ananias and Sapphira. I want you to notice the verses here because they correlate with those passages we read in the Old Testament. Acts chapter number 5 and uh, verses 1 through 11 speak of Ananias and Sapphira. We'll just, we'll try to read it quickly. And, and, and as they spake unto the people, the priests, uh, excuse me, that's chapter 4. Uh, but as a certain man named Ananias and Sapphira, his wife, sold a possession and kept back part of the price, his wife also being privy to it and brought a certain part and laid it at the apostles' feet. But Peter said, Ananias, why has Satan filled thine heart to lie to the Holy Ghost and to keep back part of the price of the land? Whilst it remained, was it not in thine own? And after it was sold, was it it not in thine own power. Why hast thou conceived this thing in thine heart? Thou hast not lied unto men, but unto God. And then I was hearing these words, fell down and gave up the ghost. And of course, we know the story. The same thing happened to his wife as he came in. They had conspired together to lie to God. But I want you to notice verse number four. It says, whilst it remained, was it not thine own? And after it sold, was it not in thine own power? Why hast thou conceived this thing? Deuteronomy 23, verse 22 says, But if thou shalt forbear to vow, it shall be no sin in thee. In other words, that's saying the same thing. If you just don't, if you don't vow, then there's no sin. But if you vow, then you better pay. Remember, God has no pleasure in fools. My greatest desire in life is that God would use me. Amen. And if I'm not a man of my word, God can't use me. So I challenge you tonight, those of you listening, as well as you graduates, be people of your word so that God can use you. You know, it was wonderful. God gave uh, the children of Israel a chance. You know, they, God sent a plague and he had, he had brought this, this upon them. But, you know, he brought it to King David's attention and they were able to get that thing right so they could again have God's blessing. You know, God always wants to bless his people. And if you'll just remember those things where you failed to keep your word, and you go back. And that's what my pastor always taught me, restitution. You know, God wants us to, if we, when, we make a, when we fail to do what's right, to get back there and make it right. Not only ask for forgiveness, but make it right. And if you'll do that, just as they did, God took away the condemnation and the judgment. And listen, my, my encouragement is, is because every time in my own life where I knew I failed to do what God said, I could feel in my own walk in life that his hand of blessing and power wasn't there. I've made God promises, and those things belong to him, and I have no right to put my hands on them. And if you've given God your life to serve him, to live for him, if you've made him promises, may I encourage you, write them down. Put them in your Bible. Daily remember. You know, uh, the scriptures and in Psalms says, I, 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 I will daily keep my vows. Think about them. Pray about them daily. Make sure that you are walking in the way that pleases the Lord. 
And may God bless you as you go forward to serve him. Father in heaven, I thank you tonight for your word. I pray that you would help uh, these students, Lord, as they begin a life of service for you. Maybe even a life with a husband or wife or a life in, in service in some ministry somewhere or some church somewhere. Lord, may you help them to be people of their word. When they say they're going to do something, they'll do it. Lord, may they be a refle reflection of their wonderful Savior. And Lord, may you bless their lives as they go forward and begin a life of service for you. Lord, I pray that you'd help each of us, pastors, people. Lord, that we may also be people of our word so that you might bless us and use us. And may you remind us, even as you did David and Jonah, where we failed to do what we should. And may we then also remember and say, Lord, I will pay that that I have vowed. Lord, I know you're faithful, your spirit's faithful, and you will remind people. Bless us now, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. At this time, it's my pleasure to present to you the graduating class of the year 2020 for Fairhaven Christian Academy. We, um, our very first one to recognize is Jeremy Diaz. He graduated from high school in Venezuela, but he came up here and 
did one more year with this graduating class, we're presenting him with a certificate. The rest of the students are graduates all the way through American high school. <laughs> Karen Chavez. Jake Dameron. Jenna Davidson. Daniel Gross. Steven Gunzenhauser. Gabrielle Hodge. Renee Liss. Kamaya McWright. Holly Muller. Let's give them all a round of applause. There, as Pastor Dameron mentioned, there are some graduates who could not be with us tonight for reasons related to the national crisis. Uh, we had a master's degree student from California decide to just join us next year. Um, as we present the graduates, I will call off the names of students who might not be here because of this situation. It is my pleasure at this time to present to you the graduating class of Fairhaven Baptist College for the year 2020. The following students are receiving a Bible or a ministry cer service certificate. Hannah Dombrowski. Maria Dombrowski. The next three are not with us. Daniel Grab, Esther Grab, and George Hayward. Julia Mitchell. and Caleb Moody. Following students are receiving a secretarial diploma, Amy Brown. Mercy Van Raden was not able to be with us. Following student is receiving an Associates of Arts and Bible, Caleb Golden. Following students are receiving a Bachelor of Science in Elementary Education, Jessica Bollinger. Kelly Rarden. Rebecca Schwader. Brooke Wilson. Anna Zadarski. Following students are receiving a Bachelor of Science in Secondary Education, Levi Armacost, Jennifer Dameron, Allison Gunzenhauser, Esther Wright, following student is receiving a Bachelor of Arts in Sacred Music. Pam Jacobs. <laughs> oh, yes. It's a wedding. Let me get that thing tested. Uh. I don't think there's any more ladies. <laughs> the following students are receiving a Bachelor of Arts in Missions. David Krigo. John Norman. John Olson. The 
following students are receiving a Bachelor of Arts in Pastoral Theology and Music. Abraham Olorun Lowo. Lawrence Rooney. And our graduate with a Bachelor of Arts in Pastoral Theology, Joseph Norman, could not be with us tonight. Let's give them all a round of applause. All right, I have a couple of special things. Uh, at, in the, uh, we like giving out some other awards, and so the first couple are to some staff members. I, I love our staff. I appreciate the uh, effort and the work that they put in, the um, the time, the, even the extra time, uh, and I hope that you as parents and students appreciate the hard work that our teachers put into uh, their lessons and some into extra learning. And so the first one, I just want to honor him because he's put in some extra, and I appreciate uh, the patience and diligence uh, even for his family. So I appreciate the wives and the children that allow uh, some of our staff members to do a little extra. So I want to recognize Clint Shriver because he's graduating. Aren't you graduating with the THM? All right. So and that if you don't know what a THM is, that's a, a Master of Theology. And so he's graduating. Uh, that is a, 120 credit hours of graduate school uh, in the study of Scripture. Uh, it's the, the degree after a Master, an MDiv. All right. So, um, so he's he's on target. Uh, he's wanting to get a THD, which is the highest uh, doctrinal degree that is allowed, uh, basically in theology. So he's he's pushing for that. That's going to take a couple more years. So if Clint will come up and receive this, I appreciate Clint for the work. Then uh, a couple on our staff, all right, a couple on our staff. These guys have worked here together on our staff for 35 years, and I appreciate them so much. And just recently, uh, there's a lot of different talents that come out. Uh, and just recently, another talent was revealed to us uh, just in the last eight weeks that I had not known in the last 35 years. Uh, Tom has taught math and science in the college and some in the academy for about 35 years. And his wife, Nancy, has been directly involved with the enrollment process of incoming Fairhaven Baptist College students uh, for over 30 years. Uh, and so together, they've been here 35 years. So uh, we put a plaque together uh, for them for faith, uh, 35 years of faithful service. So Tom, why don't you come up? Is your wife in the nursery? Oh, oh, you're sitting over there. After 35 years, you can sit wherever, separately in the auditorium. So we appreciate that. That's why they have stayed happily married for 35 years. <laughs> Two more. Uh, the other one, and he didn't know he was coming for this, but I appreciated that he could he could be here tonight. I call this the defender of faith, uh, and so it actually is a lot smaller, all right, a lot smaller. Uh, the defender of faith, I guess, is a heavenly reward because nobody is going to know it's big on your desk, all right. But uh, the defender of the faith, um, this is an honor of a man. Our, our church loves him. Uh, he's been in the ministry 54 years, 54 years, including 46 years in full-time evangelism. He's a faithful husband, spirit-filled preacher, and a beloved evangelist. And the verse, Philippians 3.14, uh, comes to mind, and so we put this on here on the defender of the faith. I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus, and this represents this man. Uh, four years ago, 2016, his wife passed away, and he kept serving and preaching. 
And last year, he was diagnosed with cancer. And as our church knows, uh, he finished up in February with some intensive treatment. And the first week of March, he was preaching here. And during uh, the, the time of everybody doing online, he drove down to do this. And so this is for evangelist Gary Gilmore. We appreciate you. Appreciate men that stay true, stay faithful. 54 years. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord for them. And then one last one. Uh, our speaker this evening, we don't always do this, but our speaker this evening, uh, he served the Lord faithfully. And as you can see, he knows his Bible. And he's been faithful in his spot in three different uh, churches, uh, pastoring. He pastored in, uh, at Leroy Independent Baptist Church. Port Norris Baptist Church, I think that's the one in New Jersey, <laughs> and then God brought him home, very close to home, in Leola, Pennsylvania, Bible Baptist Church, and so it's an honor for me uh, as our college to uh, award uh, a Doctor of Divinity to Pastor Alan Gardner. We're going to close here in just a moment, and we appreciate all of you guys coming out. I appreciate all the work, hard work uh, that parents, uh, pastors, uh, so many people put into the students, their lives. And I know just one, uh, one evening doesn't represent all of that, uh, but I'm glad that we could come together. I believe that as a school, uh, whether it's in the academy, as a, a Christian academy in Freedom Baptist College, and what we want to do is honor God and uplift him. And I pray that the lives that are represented, uh, that have graduated, especially in the college, that you will go on. Uh, we've tried to put into you and instill into you. Um, the ministry is not easy. We try to present a balanced picture here at the college. Um, but I think our students know that we love it here. I love the ministry. And I know the people that we have come in, uh, we try to present that to you. There's no greater joy than serving the Lord. And there are sometimes it's hard. There's sometimes that you don't want to keep at it. And Pastor uh, Dr. Gardner alluded to that. All right. But uh, we appreciate all the work and effort, and that's our prayer. Uh, Dr. Wiglin is going to close, I believe, with God Bless America, and then we'll close in prayer. together. God bless America. Thank you.
close in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for really the specialness of being able to, to come together this evening. We're thankful, Lord, that it was done around your word, Lord, that it was done prayerfully, our prayer, in a way that uplifted you. And Lord, we're <clears throat> in prayer, especially tonight, for our graduates. I pray, God, that you would help them to uh, determine to have godly families. Lord, I pray that their kids would be raised up to follow you, Lord, in the days and the years to come. We know that um, we're going to need um, humility, but also determination in order to see your work established and move ahead. Lord, I pray that you would give every pastor represented here this evening a special wisdom, in, especially in these, in these days and weeks ahead. Lord, I pray for strong church members that will rally behind good pastors. Lord, to be at a part and jump in. And uh, Lord, be in prayer. And uh, Lord, that we would be, indeed be an army uh, of, of believers that are willing to follow you. Lord, remind us again, as we heard testimony this evening, that life is short. In the brief time that we have left on this earth, I pray that every one of us, God, would seek to give our very best to you, and give our lives to you. Thank you for being such a wonderful Savior, more than any of us deserve. Bless this evening, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs> Thank you.